Oh, please, God, help me. Help me, Lord. <laughs> he don't want you to see your own sins. He wants to take your sins. Amen? He doesn't want you to see your failure. He wants to take your failure. He doesn't want you to see your fear. He wants to take your fear. Amen? Thank you, Jesus. So there was a man. He, had, uh, he knew of two gardens. One garden he would draw from would make him sick, and the other garden he would draw from would make him well. So it's very obvious which garden he would draw from. So I decided to title today's message, Apples and Olives. And we'll understand that as we go on a little bit further. Gardens. There's a couple of gardens. I I spoke a little bit about this on a Tuesday night, and it was just so impactable that I figured I want to bring it to Sunday. And I want to share, I want to start off by saying, I'm going to need somebody here to help me if if I can, if anybody could help me. Um, That would be, you want to help me, Corey? Come on. Come on. Thanks, buddy. That's perfect. Thank you, Corey. Give Corey a big God bless you as he comes. Come on, buddy. (laughs) Come on up here, buddy. So this, this, uh, this, re- this represents two gardens right here, bananas and rocks, all right? So in this garden right here, the Lord said, you can eat from any tree you want to eat from. Just don't eat from the tree of bananas. And I'm making paraphrasing. It's a, don't eat from here. So you can eat the rocks. You can eat whatever's over here. You can eat whatever's over here, whatever's over here. So I'm telling you not to eat from anything except right here as of right now. But then somebody comes along and says, why would you want to eat rocks? Let me see you smile. Look at that. You want to break your teeth? Well, if you eat rocks, why would you break your teeth? I, I mean, you know, if you, well, you don't eat the bananas, but... I want you to eat the bananas because I don't want you to eat the rocks. I really look, I really take your teeth with pride. I hold your teeth high. I, I know someday you're going to want to meet a nice girl and get married. Yes. And, and you got to have teeth, bro. You got to have teeth. So you don't want to eat from the rocks. You want to eat the banana. But God said, don't, don't worry about what God said. Try, think about it. I mean, God gave you a brain, didn't he? He don't want you eating rocks, does he? No, he wants you to eat the fruit. So maybe you heard him wrong. So just eat the banana. Now, which one would you like to eat, the banana or the rocks? Yeah. I guess the banana. But God told you not to eat the banana. He said to eat the rocks. So do me a favor. I want you to pick up one of them rocks, and I want you to put it in your mouth and start chewing it. Come on. It's just a rock. Wow. Is it a rock? No. What is it? Candy. Yeah, you want another one? No. <laughs> you, don't, you don't like licorice? <laughs> but can you eat the rock? Yeah. It's not a rock, is it? It just looks like a rock to you. So basically... Oh, you did a great job. I couldn't have done better. Thank you, man. Have a seat. Now, listen to this. You say, well, why do you spend so much time doing these visuals? Because you never forget them. People always call me. You'll be calling me next week going, hey, I like that thing about the rocks. You see, God said you can eat anything but not this right here. This looks, this is a real banana. You can eat it. It tastes good. But he don't want, nobody wants to eat the rocks. So the first thing you do is maybe God told me I could have a banana if there was nothing else to eat. You see what I'm saying? But no, 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 you, you're going to eat the banana, and God said not to eat the banana. He said eat the rocks, but I can't eat a rock. It's going to chip my teeth. You don't eat the rock because it makes sense to you. You eat it because he said so. God has a bigger vision than what you can see. You see rocks. You didn't realize it was organic licorice. 
You didn't realize it was just as good for you as the banana with different, different, you know, whatever for your body. So we, have, we sit here all day long, and we do what God tells us to do until somebody comes along and tells us that this is better. It doesn't make a difference if someone can convince you that this is better. God said, don't touch it. He said, eat the rocks. So pick the rock up and eat it. Amen? Same thing with, same thing. We have commercials. We have billboards. We have radio announcements. We have police announcements. We have, we have it in the back of books. We have, we have clubs for it. We have Mothers Against Drunk Drivers. We have all kinds of, of different, different uh, warning signs out there to not drink and drive, but yet when it comes down to it, we justify why it's okay to just drive one mile home when we're completely obliterated. Obliviated. Is that the right word I'm using here? So... Obliterated. Thank you. So, so, whatever. So, we're doing what we want to do. We're, we're, not, we're not going by what the law says to do. We're doing what we want to do. God said, do not eat the tree in the middle of the garden. Eat anything you want. But the serpent made him believe that the tree was a lot better. And I'm going to start with reading in verse um, 17 of Genesis chapter 2. Watch this here. But... You must not eat from the tree of the, of the knowledge of good and evil. I don't, I don't care who tells you it's better than the rocks. Don't eat it. It's better to go hungry if you don't want to try the rock out, but just don't eat from right here. So verse 8, it goes on to say this. It says, when the woman saw that the fruit of the tree of... Uh, for, 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 <laughs> Excuse me. Pick my lips up. They fell off. When the woman saw that the fruit of the tree was good for her and pleasing to the eye, when it was pleasing to the eye, when it made sense to the eye, then it went on, and also desirable for gaining wisdom, she took some and she ate it. First, it's pleasing to the eye. Second, it makes sense to you. Then you partake and you eat it. And after she did that, she also gave, it, gave some to her husband who was with her and he ate it. And then... Say, and then the eyes of both of them were open, and they realized that they were naked. So they sewed fig leaves together, and they made coverings for themselves. Your eyes are enticed by sin, but they're not opened until you partake in the sin. Your eyes know better, but as soon as you give in and partake, then they're open, and then you see the evil. Then you see the sin. Then you see the madness. Then you begin to partake into the madness. Then you enter into a place you never want to be your whole life. But then watch what begins to happen. As soon as you are enticed by what God said not to do, and you do it anyway, then you step into a whole new realm, and that realm goes to a place that most people have been to, and we need to get ourselves out of this. Verse 11 in the same chapter, chapter 3, Genesis, it says, And he said, Who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree that I commanded you not to eat from? Have you eaten the bananas when I told you not to eat them? Have you not picked up the bowl of rocks and eaten, eaten them? Oh, Genesis chapter 3, verse 12, watch what it says here. Then the man said, Well, what had happened... God, was the woman that you put here with me, she gave me the fruit from the tree, and I ate it. Wasn't my idea. It's her idea. It's never anybody's idea. It's always the next person. When sin is involved, the first thing you do is pass the blame. And then what ends up do when you pass the blame and don't take responsibility, what ends up happening is you grow deeper into what you're doing. Don't pass the blame. Get to hit your knees and repent. I'm sorry. Say that. See, see what I'm saying? Sin, sin equals your eyes open equals the blame game. Watch this now. Then the Lord God said to the woman, what is this you have done? The woman said, the serpent deceived me. I ate it. The serpent. See, first of all, the, the blame game is going. Adam said it was the woman. The woman said it was the serpent. Is it the woman's fault? No, it's not the woman's fault. She wasn't even born yet when God told Adam not to eat from the, the bowl of bananas. It, wasn't, it, was, it was Adam's fault. He was the one that didn't say, by the way, do not touch the bananas under no circumstances. Eat the rocks. They're rocks. I can't eat a rock. Just eat it. If God said to eat the rock, eat the rock. It doesn't have to make sense to you. Obedience and submission is all God's looking for. He's not looking for you to make sense of this world. He's just looking for you to be obedient and enter into it. He'll do the rest. Amen? Somebody say amen. Come on, man. 
So the blame game begins to take place. Then, problem with that is, now everybody's punished. God just says, listen, all across the board, verse 14, so the Lord God said to the serpent, because you have done this, cursed are you above all livestock and all wild animals. You will crawl on your belly and you will eat dust all the days of your life and I will put enmity, hostility, between you and the woman and between, watch this, and between your offspring and hers and he will crush your head and you will strike his heel. Oh, I like that. I like what God was saying there, but nobody really picks up on that when you read it. Because you have deceived my child. See, people look at this going, oh, God was ticked off at Adam. God wasn't mad at Adam. God knew what he was going to do. There was no plan B in God's life. God has plan A always, just like in your life. You're all thinking, God's mad at me. God's not mad at you. Because you messed up, he knew you were going to mess up, just like, just like Adam messed up. That's why he told the serpent. He literally, he, he plainly told the serpent, he said, between you and the woman, I will bring hostility. Her offspring will crush your head. Who is the serpent? Satan. Who is her offspring through the line of David? Who will come years later? Jesus, the son of God. He's not mad at you because you messed up. He had a plan to bless you the whole time. You can't look at your life as a disaster because the enemy's job is not, is not only to get you to eat from the tree of, of knowledge, but to help you confuse the knowledge that God gives you. So he's trying to get you to stop where you're trying to go in life, and he's trying, so God has told you to do great things. He put you on this earth to do amazing things, but the serpent is making you eat the bananas and then making you feel guilty for it. The serpent said, I, I'll get him to eat that banana, and he took the authority from Adam at that moment right there. He took the blessing from Adam right there, but God was not mad he, at Adam. He said, I got a plan to take the authority back, and the days that we live in right now, we can't no longer look in the garden with the apple, we have to move to a different garden. Amen? You need to get a hold of that because some of you out there and some of you watching online right now, you're sitting there going, I can't even figure out if God is even ever going to use me again. You're still here. He's going to use you. You just ate a banana. Repent. That's all. Just repent. You'll, you'll see. You'll understand this in a minute. Keep listening. Watch this. So he said that to the serpent. Then he said to the woman, I will make your pains of childbearing severe. With pains and labor, you'll give birth to children. Your desire will be for your husband, and he he will rule over you. And to Adam, he said, because you listened to your wife, and you ate the fruit from the tree of which I commanded you, you must not eat from it. Cursed is the ground because of you, though through painful toil, you will eat from the food food from it all the days of your life. It'll produce thorns and thistles for you, and you will eat the plants of the field by the sweat of your brow, and you will eat food until you return to the ground. Since from it you were taken, for dust you are, and dust you will return. He says, listen, I'm going to bless you, but because of sin, I want you to always understand, if you ever choose the serpent over the one that's going to crush his head, you'll never go any further than this. You need to understand, God's pun- it was not a punishment. He's not looking at the X, Y, Z amount of years you spend on this earth. He's going to bless you here on this earth, but he's more concerned about eternity. And he needs you to understand, take your eyes off of the serpent and all of his tricks. He can only strike you on the heel. That's it. He can only strike you right here on the heel. He can't hurt you. He can't, he can't climb up you. He can't destroy you. He can't even get to your mind. He can only strike your heel. That's it. Amen. Oh, come on, man. I hope somebody's getting a hold of this out there. This was the garden of paradise. This was the garden of paradise. Everything was supposed to be perfect. Women were having babies with no pain. You didn't have to work for your food. You didn't really even have to eat. Your body was healthy. You were never going to die. But Adam ruined it all. No, Adam didn't ruin it all. He made a blessing for all of us. Because of what Adam did, now plan A can be engaged. Somebody say amen. Amen. What is that? Let's talk about this. Let's talk about the other garden. The Garden of Apples, the Garden of Olives. Now the olives, because the Garden of Eden was, you know, olives. Garden of, um, Garden of uh, Gethsemane, which I'm going to talk about. The Garden of Eden was the, was the apple, which those are bananas, so don't even get confused right now. Those of you watching online going, he's pointing to bananas thinking they're apples. Is he okay? <laughs> Glory to God. Anyway, let's talk about the Garden of Gethsemane. The Garden of Gethsemane. Watch how different this garden was. Because of Eden, Gethsemane had to take place. And I talked about this before, but I, I, really wanted, I really want to drive this home right now. I really want to help you to understand this. In the Garden of Gethsemane was complete submission to the flesh. 
That's where Jesus was. That's where he was sweating blood. That's where all that took place in the Garden of Eden was coming to a head in the Garden of Gethsemane. Everything that the enemy destroyed mankind with up until this time right now was taking place now in Eden, but is going to be transferred into the Garden of Gethsemane. And once you understand Gethsemane, then you will understand that he is nothing but something that crawls along the ground and nips at your heels but cannot even destroy you. So in the Garden of Gethsemane, Jesus was sweating blood. He was praying. This is where he says, your will be done, God, not mine. That's where Satan was defeated. He was defeated in the Garden of Gethsemane, manifested on the cross, but his word was his word. Your will be done, not mine. That's all God wants from us. He wants to bless us. He wants perfection in our life. He want, even though we fail to eat the rock because it looks like a rock, all he wants you to say is your will be done, not mine. The Garden of, Gets of Eden was flesh gone wild, and the Garden of Gethsemane was flesh weak but submissive. His apostles were praying with him in the Garden of Gethsemane. And he went over, and they were sleeping. Come on, boys, get up. He went back sleeping. Boys, get up. Goes back another time. You guys got to pray with me, man. You're going to fall into temptation too. You got to pray, but you can't do it. That's okay. That's why I'm here. Man, I didn't ask you to fulfill it. I just asked you to submit to it. I know you can't fulfill it. I learned that in the Garden of Eden. That's why I'm here. I'm not going to hang on the cross because you succeeded in Eden. I'm going to hang on the cross because you failed in Eden. I'm going to hang on the cross because what you did in Eden took all authority back from you, and I love you so much, I'm going to take it back for you. All I ask you to do is stay awake. Your spirit is willing, but your flesh is weak. And even if your flesh is weak, I will lift you up in the midst of your weakness and carry you as long as it's willing. Amen? Amen? You getting a hold of this? Good, because it's going fast. I like it. Now, why is it so important to choose the right garden? Why is it so important to choose Gethsemane and not Eden? Because Eden is all the flesh. Gethsemane is all submission. You have got to enter into every day of your life in the presence of the Most High God willing to submit to him, not partake in your flesh, because the bananas look better than the rocks. Amen? It doesn't have to make sense. God's not looking for you to figure it out. I'll say it again. He's just looking for you to submit and be obedient. And this is what he asks of you. In order for you to enter in and partake in the Garden of Gethsemane, you have got to first understand what he is asking of you. And this is what he says in John chapter 6, verse 28. Listen to this. Then someone had asked Jesus, what must we do to do the works God requires? What must we do to do what God, what God asks us and what he requires? They're thinking physical. They're thinking, what can I do? What can I do? What can, what can I do? What must we do? Jesus is like, the last time I put it in your hands, you messed up. So I can't do that anymore. I'm not going to put it in your hands. I'm going to take it on my hands upon the cross. You're not going to succeed without him. So he says this right here. He's, Jesus answered him, the work of God is this. Believe in the one who sent me. I'm not asking you to do anything. I'm just asking you to believe. I'm asking you to submit. I'm asking you to humble yourself. I'm asking you to allow me to exalt you and don't try to exalt yourself because you'll fail in the midst of it all. That's all I'm asking you to do, but people don't really understand that. Then Jesus declared, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never go hungry. Say never. never. Say never. If you go to Jesus, you will never go hungry because it's not about you fulfilling it. It's about him doing it through you. That, that's why he could use the word never go hungry. And whoever believes in me will never be thirsty because I will feed your thirst. I will feed your hunger. I will feed the passion of what's inside of you. But we look at God and people are like, I used to be a Christian, but I'm not going to be a Christian anymore because I can't do it. Of course you can't do it. That's where Gethsemane comes in. You living in Eden, that's how you think. I can't do it. I messed up. Give me a fig leaf. Somebody can see something. No, God understands that. He don't care about the fig leaf. He's trying to put the covering of the Holy Spirit upon you, not a fig leaf. He don't want you to see your own sins. He wants to take your sins, amen? He doesn't want you to see your failure. He wants to take your failure. He doesn't want you to see your fear. He wants to take your fear, amen? 
Are you getting a hold of this? You can't fail. Say, I can't fail. All you got to do is submit. Doesn't have to make sense. Just has to submit. So what do they want us to do? Ah, Jesus, I don't want you to do anything. I just want you to believe. That's it. I want you to believe. Now watch what he says here. All those the Father gives me will come to me. This is verse 37. And whoever comes to me, I will never drive away. For I have come down from heaven not to do my will, but to do the will of him who sent me. And this is the will of him who sent me. This is God's will for all mankind. He says this. But raise up them. Oh, hold on a second. Excuse me. Forgive me. And this is, what, this is what the will of the one who sent me, that I shall lose none of all those he has given me, but raise them up at the last day. He's talking about the apostles right here. He's talking about all except Judas, because he knew Judas. And then he says, for my father's will is that everyone. Oh, man, are you missing it? His father's will was first for the apostles, first for the 11, because the 12 messed up, the 12th one messed up. First for the 12, 11 minus 1. Then he says, for my Father's will is that everyone, that's you and me, who lacks, who, sorry, who looks to the Son and believes in him shall have eternal life, and I will raise them up on the last day. I'm not asking you to be perfect. I know you're a sinner. I know you're constantly grabbing at the wrong apples. I know you're always grabbing at the wrong bowl. This is the bowl of hunky-looking men. This is the bowl of beautiful women. This is the bowl of stay with your wife and your husband. Hallelujah. Amen. So I look at my wife and my husband, and it says, I'm going for a banana. I'm going to get me a banana. Well, you're going to be a monkey. But God says, I don't care if you grab the banana, because I know you're weak. Spirit's willing, but the flesh is weak. Now, when you say, God, I really don't care what you say. I'm going to get me a banana. But when you're going, God, help me. Help me. Help me, God, please. Help me, please. Oh, please, God, help me. Help me, Lord. <laughs> I'm sorry, God, I can't, I can't, I need a banana, please, Lord, please forgive me, God, please forgive me. <laughs> and then what happens when you get done eating the banana? You feel horrible, don't you? And the devil says to you, you ain't never going to make it. That plan God has for you, it ain't for you. Not with that kind of life. Whoa. He already knew before he put me on this earth I was going to eat the banana. But he, he doesn't ask me. He wants me to submit. Now watch this. Watch what he says here. Watch what he says here. In order to do this, in order to be in God's will, you have got to be willing to consume the Son of Man. You have got to be willing to trust his word, to live by his word, to obey his word. You don't have to fulfill it. Yeah, amen. Oh, did you get a hold of that? Well, shout then. Somebody say something out there. Come on, people online, start screaming back. I'm going to say it again. He wants you to trust his word. He wants you to live by his word. He wants you to obey his word. He doesn't need you to fulfill it because he knows you can't. He said, I will fulfill it. I just need you to enter in. I just need you to submit. Amen? God. Now, in verse 53... Jesus said to them, very truly I tell you. Let me show you how he wants you to submit. Let me show you what God asks of you. This is what I ask. Very truly I tell you, unless you eat of the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. That's where it all stops, right there. I ain't eating no zombie. I'm not drinking no blood. This is what they're thinking back then because they didn't understand. Now we understand it. But whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise them up on the last day, for my flesh is real food and my blood is real drink. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me and I in them. Amen. I didn't, listen, I consumed it. In order for, I had to take the banana, I had to take the candy, the, well, candy and put it in my mouth, and I had to consume it. If you choose, if your desire and your heart is willing, but your flesh is weak, if your spirit is willing, but your flesh is weak, you're willing to eat the rock, but some days you just go after the banana. God says, I understand that, but you need to consume me. You need to eat of my word. You need to breathe my word. You can't let the world talk you out of me. You can't let just because your faith cannot be based on the outcome of how you pray. 
I prayed, Lord, and you didn't give me nothing. I don't have no more faith in you. I, I gave, and you didn't give me nothing. I did what you told me to do, and you didn't do it. It's not part of his plan to do it your way. Remember what happened your way, the Garden of Eden. It got us all in trouble. When you can enter in daily on his will being done and not your will, be, will being done, then you begin to eat and consume the body, not the flesh, not his flesh. Every persona, everything he was, every word he spoke, you begin to eat it. You begin to drink it in. You begin to take it. That's why we do communion. This is my body. It was broken. But we even go a step further, and we enter into communion, and we get on our face before God, and we worship him, and we say, Lord, my spirit is willing, but my flesh is weak. Do you still love me, God? Are you still going to use me, Lord? Can you still make anything out of me? You better believe I can. I got a plan for you, and your sin is part of it. That means I can go sin. That means I can sin all I want. No, but in your failure, he brings glory only to those who seek him. I'll eat that banana. I don't care what any, you care what the church says. I don't care what God says. I don't care about nothing. That's not the mentality he's looking for. Amen? Amen. So, at the end of the day, I want you to understand this. I'm going to leave you with this scripture right here. I'm going to leave you with the scripture of those people that are out there that say, I can't do it, Joe. I've tried. I have tried. Mark 9, 24 says this. Before I say that, he didn't do this so you can overcome sin. He did this so that through him, you have already overcome sin. Does anybody, go look the word overcome up. It means you beat it. But I'm sinning right now as you're talking to me. Somebody online, you're watching, you're sinning as we're talking. You got this on in the background. You're doing stuff you shouldn't be doing. But I've already, I'm sinning right now. No, you've already been overcome by the sin. You just haven't walked in it yet. You haven't walked in your freedom. You haven't walked in your forgiveness yet because you're still too bound because you ate a banana yesterday. Amen? Amen. Mark 9, 24 says this. There was a man who had a boy who was sick, had seizures, had all, something wrong with him. He was deaf, you know, do fits and stuff. And, and he kept throwing himself down and throwing himself into the fire. And the man says, if you can help me. Jesus says, if I can help you? If I can help you, he says. He says, well, you probably can. I just, I just don't know if I can believe. And he says this. Immediately, the boy's father explained, I do believe, Jesus but can you help me overcome my unbelief? I do believe I'm called into this world. I do believe, I do believe you're gonna bless me, but can you help me believe in the areas where I can't believe? Can you just help me overcome the areas where I'm weak? As Christians, you think you have to be perfect. You don't. As Christians, you're already a mess. That's why he came. So people that are watching online and you're making, your Christians are this, and I don't like God because of Christians. You can't blame God because of man because we're not always the best billboards. So Jesus even said just in Mark 9, just help me with my unbelief. I will help you. I will help you. You ask me for bread, I'm not going to give you a stone. You ask me for the Holy Spirit, I'm not going to send you a serpent. You ask me to help you believe I'm going to help you overcome your unbelief. may not be in the way you want, but you're going to overcome it. Does that make sense? Did that bless you? That's all I got. Come on, stand up with me, would you please? We don't want to leave you today without giving you an opportunity to follow Jesus. The Word says that the only way to the Father is through the Son. Take a moment and repent for your sins and ask God to help you follow Him on this journey. It's an amazing journey that will bless your life on earth and in eternity. If you've made the decision to follow Jesus today, be sure to get into a church that teaches the Word of God, and don't forget to read the instruction manual. That's the Bible. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact us at orlandofamilychurch.com or 407-462-1358. We'd love to see you. Our church services are every Sunday at 1.30 p.m. Hope to see you soon.